Hello? Meanwhile in Birmingham. Today we're going to talk about krill, especially Antarctic krill, one of the most abundant animal species on the planet. Turns out krill are extremely crucial to how ocean ecosystems function, more crucial than even the president. But first, and importantly, what is a krill? Krill are small crustaceans, think tiny shrimp-like animals. Some species range less than half an inch in length. Other species, the ones that'll probably end up playing basketball in college, can get up to six inches long. They are found all over the planet's oceans and eat mostly plankton. Plankton are microscopic organisms that drift through the world's waters. Freeloaders. Plankton often forms the very bottom of food chains, and krill are usually the next link up in that chain. And despite their size, krill are very important. But why? How is something so small so important? What do they do that's so magical? Krill are filter feeders, and they kind of glow in the dark, like a light bulb with feet that can swim. They don't quite sound important, do they? But their true power is that they travel in groups, big groups, huge groups, swarms, really. They do this in order to avoid being eaten, kind of like a high school marching band. This isn't a perfect strategy because a lot of different kinds of predators eat krill anyway. Predators like penguins, fish, squid, seals, and whales are among the worst nightmares for krill. In fact, the largest organism in the history of Earth life, the blue whale, feeds almost exclusively on krill. Despite being on everyone's menu, enough krill survive globally and in such vast numbers that they can have huge effects on ecosystems all over the world. Which brings us to the Antarctic krill a keystone species for the Antarctic environment. There are so many Antarctic krill in the Southern Ocean that it's thought they might be one of the most abundant animal species on the planet. Between 125 and 725 million metric tons of Antarctic krill exist. Or one krillion? Sorry, I couldn't help myself. So, when a swarm of Antarctic krill does something, it doesn't do it small. Like most krill, Antarctic krill hang out in massive swarms, reaching up to 30,000 individuals per cubic meter. They move up and down in the water, from the ocean depths during the day to the surface at night in order to feed. Since there are so many krill, they eat a lot of plankton. And there is a lot of plankton down there. Antarctic waters possibly contain the largest collection of plankton on the planet. Because plankton found in this region of the world is of such unusually high abundance, Antarctic waters can rival places like the Amazon rainforest in terms of turning sunlight and carbon dioxide into organic compounds, what ecologists call primary production. After krill eat the plankton, they poop. The resulting krill waste, which contains significant amounts of carbon dioxide, free falls to the bottom of the ocean, where it may stay for up to a thousand years. That makes krill poop a kind of significant carbon sink, and I suppose that makes Antarctic krill a kind of celebrity organism. I mean, if your poop is that important, then you must be famous, right? If we factor in the massive numbers of Antarctic krill that eat the massive amounts of plankton we find there, then we have to consider that the waters around Antarctica are some of the most important, most productive waters in the world. This krill-plankton relationship may even be among the most important ecological relationships on the entire planet. A good thing that this relationship is in absolutely no danger of being disrupted, ever, and will continue on forever and ever without worry. What do you mean there's a problem? 
No, there isn't. So that krill plankton relationship that we talked about? Turns out it's not as safe as we thought. Turns out that Antarctic krill need to hide under pack ice during key portions of their development. And the amount of pack ice that shows up each year is getting smaller and smaller, thanks to climate change. So that's great. What? No way. And there's another problem. Ocean acidification. Krill exoskeletons contain carbonate, which is susceptible to acidic conditions. In fact, with enough increase in ocean acidity, you can even prevent krill eggs from hatching. Which is horrible and destructive. Why do you even bring that up? You know, your glass is half empty, isn't it? Okay. So now you know a thing or two about Antarctic krill, which is good because they're important and they're gonna come up from time to time. And now you know that even though the krill plankton relationship is crucial, it is yet another area of life under threat thanks to climate change. Well, that's it for this week. Hit the subscribe button down below to uh, follow along on this crazy adventure. Where is the subscribe button? And if you're new here, here's a quick list of some things you can expect to see in this space. Filmmaking stuff. Strange and awkward transitions. Topics regarding Antarctica. Topics regarding not Antarctica. And the occasional argument with a cartoon penguin. What? And if you're still in the mood to watch something and you like Star Trek, then check out our other channel, Trekspertise. It's a space where we explore the universe of sci-fi and Star Trek. No. I did the dishes yesterday. You know something? You're a lousy roommate, okay? And you, and you know something else? I hate the smell of fish, okay?